Hi everybody, um, this is the second video uh, in my series on uh, the Feynman technique uh, for integration. Um, it uses the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, which I demonstrated the, uh, the proof of in my last video. Or I shouldn't say it's a proof, it's more of an explanation of why it works. Um, but anyway, today we're going to be using that to solve this integral right here. And I invite you to pause the video and try and solve that using traditional techniques that you learn in uh, first and second semester calculus, uh, such as u substitution, uh, trig substitution, um, integration by parts. Go ahead. Uh, I'm confident you won't be successful. Um, anyway. Um, the whole idea of Feynman integration is to take an integral and then reparameterize re it. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function, uh, a function of t that's defined to be the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t minus 1 over the natural log of x. And you can see that that very closely matches our original integral. And the, the, the reason why we did that will become obvious uh, shortly. Um, and you can see that that will be a function of t because you're taking a multivariable function uh, in terms of x and t, integrating it with respect to x, you will be left with nothing but t's, making it a function of t. A um, couple other things we need to, to note on this is that if you evaluate this function of t at t equals 2, you will get our original integral. Uh, see, f of 2 would be the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus 1 over natural log x dx. Second thing we want to note is that if you evaluate this function at the point 0, you will get 0. Pause the video, work it out yourself. It, it, it's pretty clear that you'll get 0. If you, if you plug in 0 for t, you're going to get 0 for that entire integral. Um... So the next step is using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, we can actually take the derivative with respect to t of this function of t directly by taking the partial derivative with respect to t of the inner function. As you can see, that's the next step right there. If you take the partial derivative of x to the t minus 1 all over natural log x, you will get x to the t. I think I specified partial with respect to t. If, if not, that's what you do. So anyway, we arrive at that step. f prime of t, which is another way of saying the partial, der um, the derivative with respect to t of this function of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t dx. Now we're getting into uh, more familiar territory. Uh, that's just going to be x to the t plus 1 over t plus 1 evaluated between 0 and 1 which gives you 1 over t plus 1. So now we have, um, we, we know what f prime of t is as just a, a normal everyday function. It's 1 over t plus 1. But we're not interested in f prime of t, we're interested in f of t. So, well, how do you get to f of t from f prime? You integrate it. So integrating f prime of t is the same as integrating 1 over t plus 1. You guys all know that that's going to give you the natural log of t plus 1, and this is important, plus c. I know why my calculus teachers always really harped on the plus c. It's going to be important now. So we have f of t is equal to the natural log of t plus 1 plus c. Um, that's, that's where this comes into play. If we evaluate that at 0, we get 0. That's in the next step right there. 0 is equal to the natural log of 0 plus 1, which is 1. We all know that the natural log of 1 is 0, giving us c is equal to 0. So we can replace that c with nothing, giving us our final f of t being equal to the natural log of t plus 1. And of course, you know, absolute value and all that. Uh, not important for this video. Casual math channel. Um, so now we have f of t. And we already know that if you evaluate f at 2, you get our answer. 
So we have I, which is what we want, is equal to f of 2, which is equal to the natural log of 2 plus 1, which is equal to the natural log of 3, and that's it. We're done. The integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus 1 over natural log x dx is the natural log of 3.